Hello everyone. In this channel, I search for good deal in LA area, buy them, clean them, bring them to brand new condition, and then sell them to one of my subscribers so they can get the affordable upgrade. So I already helped several people to get very good GPUs for very good prices. But today decided to make a little bit different type of video. As RTX 470 is rumored to be launched very soon with MSRP of $600 and performance equals to 3080 and most important with 12GB of memory which can decrease current used GPU prices. I decided to take a break from the deal hunt as the goal of this channel to prevent you one of the best deals which in case of new GPU coming into the market can be a little bit tricky. So today I want to find out if I can get better noise to performance ratio by switching from air cooler to liquid cooler. And for this test I choose Arctic liquid freezer to 280 millimeters. And as this channel is about the deals, I couldn't just go and buy a brand new buying paying the full price. So I found a good open box item which was sold by official Arctic eBay store for $67. So I bought it and now as you can see it's already arrived to my house. So I was inspecting it to see if it's genuinely open box. And as you can see it has a quality check sticker on it which means there is no issue with the headsync which was previously reported by Gamers Nexus channel. And this was a Revision 4, which was also shipped with the latest Intel CPU installation kit. So this cooler can be installed in latest Ryzen and Intel CPUs without any issues. So in my initial mini ITX build, I was using Noctua C14S cooler, which I bought open box for $50. It was a good cooler with relatively low noise and good performance, but it has very few fan modification options so I decided to search and find something better and I saw the initial reviews of Thierman Wright Peerless Assassin 120 cooler which was performing very good almost on par to D15 which is cost twice more and it was capable of cooling the latest gen CPUs both from Ryzen and the Intel so I decided to buy that one and see what temperatures and lows I will get from this. So if you buy that cooler now, brand new, in Amazon, you can get it for $45. Or if you want to wait for open box item, maybe you can squeeze like another $5 to $10. But for this amount of money, I didn't wait. I just went and straight bought a brand new one. As noise is my number one priority in any build, I just couldn't use that cooler with the stock fans. So I go ahead and bought one of the best value fans, which is Arctic Pit Fells. And now our budget coming around $64, which is just $3 less than the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. So within $70 budget, they are comparable to each other. And I also bought Fantech Titori for testing to see if they provide better value but like end, end up using pitfalls and putting p30 in the case so after many experiments with different fans and different orientation i came to the conclusion that this is the best option with this cooler when there is a three fans i installed one slim p12 at the back of the case which is pulling the fresh air i also installed the dust filter not to have a dust coming inside the case so one slim fan pulling the fresh air passing to the second fan which is in the middle of radiators then that one passing the fresh air to the last fan and then that air being pulled out from the case through the Pantec T30s and I also have installed two slim P12s at the bottom which is providing fresh air to the GPU so in this way I am getting the fresh air to the CPU and GPU and then hot air being pulled from the case by the big Fantec T30 fans and these configurations providing best noise to performance ratio for me but still I want to test this liquid cooler and to see maybe I will be able to get even better 
noise to performance ratio from that cooler. And this test is valid only for the CPUs which consumes at least 150 watts. For all other CPUs, I think air coolers will provide much more better value to performance ratio than the liquid coolers. Both my CPU and GPU were tuned to produce lead seed. So to make this test comparable for other users who have similar CPU and similar case, first let's reset the bias values. But before resetting the bias values, I need to save it because at least for curve optimizer values, I spent two days finding the value for each core, which I don't want to lose. And I want to reuse them after finishing this test. I also have a special PBO limits to keep the temperatures of the CPU in Cinebench below 80 degrees and while I'm gaming around like 70 degrees. So PBO limits needs to be changed to the motherboard level which will allow CPU to use around 230 watts and generate enough heat to stress the coolers at the maximum level. So I'll make three tests. The first test will be all fans both for cooler and the case on maximum speed to see what will be the wattage used for the CPU and when the CPU will start throttling and how much watt it will be using in Cinebench after 10 minutes of run. The second test again will be Cinebench 10 minute run but it will be noise normalized test to compare at the same noise level what kind of wattage the cooler is capable of cooling. And the third one will be the gaming. Again, same wattage, same megahertz for the CPU. In this test, we'll be comparing the noises and the temperatures of CPU. And the very important point, that noise will be not compared by the decibels, as the decibels, same decibels can sound completely different to the human ears, but by listening to the real noise generated by each cooler. And here you can see the dust filter and the P12 fan pulling the fresh air into the case. So now let's take apart the air cooler and install the liquid cooler. So after two days of testing, this is my final configuration which I'll be using to compare 
against the air cooler. With this configuration I get the best temperature and the lowest noise possible. I also install the grills on the fans to protect the tubes touching the fan blades. I also tried to put the fans in front of radiator but in that configuration the noise was much higher. So this is the best. I also get rid of the 3.5 inch HDD and instead of it I bought 4 terabytes SSD and installed it the front panel. Also I used this foam sealant to have no gaps between the radiators and the side panel so the hot air from GPU won't be sucked to the radiator and only fresh air through the side panel will come into the radiator so I strongly advise anybody who will be installing this cooler to do this modification as it will help to isolate hot air from the GPU going to the radiator now let's compare the data for each for the first test running all fans in the case on the max speed which means also the cooler fans running on the max and running Cinebench for 10 minutes this is the last minute I captured of this test and showing that the air cooler already throttling as it reached 90 degrees while the water cooler still have one degree left in his arsenal and we can compare CPU package power for the air cooler it's around 210 watts when the water cooler keeping it 230 almost 20 watts difference which means that in this test when noise doesn't matter water cooler definitely is more preferable now let's run the second test which for me is more important where each fan run based on the curve to have as low as possible the noise level coming from the PC but at the same time not to have a big sacrifice in the performance here we can see the curves for each of the fans now let's run and see what will be the temperatures where noise is a priority and very important to remember the previous result when all fans was maxed out the water cooling wasn't throttling now let's see if it will throttle in this condition or not again nine minutes passed it, this is the last minute we can see that the air cooler before was doing around 200 watts 10 now it decreased to 204 watts at the same time the water cooler is reached 90 degree but if we look at the CPU package power we can see that we are losing just 2 watts when previous result with max out setting was using 230 watts now it's using around 228 29 watts so we can say that it's just starting throttling at the last minute of the test where the air cooler was throttling from the beginning and again the difference here almost 25 watts between these two coolers and final test will be testing these coolers in the gaming here we can see that running fans on the optimized settings there is a 7 degree difference while the clock speed and the power draw is similar that's already a good sign that the water cooler is much capable one now let's see the noise difference So after all this test I can definitely say that liquid cooler provide much better noise to performance ratio within $70 budget so anybody who have this case and similar type of CPU 
and can find the open box items i'm definitely advising to try to upgrade their air coolers to this one thank you for watching and see you in the next one